the scariest movie of all time. That's something about which you would find a lot of debate. A lot of people would have their own opinions, very strongly held, about what is the scariest movie of all time. But one movie for which I think I've seen this used most frequently and most consistently is The Exorcist. 1973 movie by Walter Friedkin from the, uh, the screenplay and the novel by William Peter Blatty. Oh, by the way, this Draft House Diary is for Wednesday, October 25th, 2023. When I came out here to Aspen Grove to see The Exorcist, a 4K restoration of the original theatrical cut. And I think it might be the scariest movie of all time. I could find arguments for other movies, but there are things that this does better than I think a lot of movies do, better than most movies do. This is the ultimate slow burn horror movie. It takes so long to get to the things that people tend to think of when they think of The Exorcist. The demonic makeup, the thrashing performance by little Linda Blair. All of those are there and they're terrifying, but they are terrifying because of the lead up to them. First of all, this is not called The Possession. It's not called The Exorcism. It's called The Exorcist. And I've got to think that The Exorcist refers to Max von Sydow's character, Father Marin, who is the experienced exorcist who features in the climax of the movie. But we see him at the very beginning on an archaeological dig in Iraq, finding something that disturbs him greatly and seems to have some kind of demonic connotations. And then we don't see him again for almost the entire movie. He shows up at the end... And in between is people struggling with their faith, struggling with the very idea of the devil, let alone demonic possession. And Ellen Burstyn's character is slowly, desperately trying to find out what is wrong with her little girl who is behaving so strangely and seems to be in such torment. And step by step, we get to the point where she is interacting with uh, Father Karras, who is a priest and a psychiatrist, a Jesuit, who is suffering a severe crisis of faith. And the two of them, much against his initial judgment, the two of them realize, yeah, this calls for an exorcism. And eventually the church agrees. So what makes this so scary? Well, the way that we introduce the exorcist, Father Marin, at the beginning, half a world away, it shows that the war is big. The war against Satan and against evil is big. It's global. But the rest of the movie shows us that the battles are intimate. The battles are personal. The battles affect the lives of individuals in in terrible ways. That's the context of this movie. The fact that it is steeped not just in the, the Roman Catholic cosmology and worldview, but it stays consistent to that worldview, and in particular, what that worldview can be like to someone who is having the sort of crisis of faith that Father Karras is having, that increases the stakes, increases the, the jeopardy, and leads us in the audience to question, sure, you finally decided it's going to be an exorcism. Is that even going to work? So the fact that this movie takes its time, it builds slowly, it lets you figure out what to fear, and then gives you time to fear it. Those are the things that make it work so very, very well. I've spoken before about what kinds of horror movies I do and do not like. I don't like the ones in which humans are being horrible to other humans. Movies about torture and cannibalism and things like that, they can shock me, they can repulse me, but they don't frighten me, they don't scare me the way a supernatural horror movie can, the way something about demons and ghosts can. And this is the ultimate demon movie, because it puts it into a context that makes it seem possible, almost inevitable, 
that we see all of the the rational scientific explanations being exhausted and in the end it comes down to a desperate mother turning for salvation for her little girl to the exorcist. Other parts of this trip to the Alamo. The pre-roll was predictable but very good. Lots of trailers for movies about demonic possession and exorcism. This wasn't the same pre-show that I've seen for other supernatural horror movies, but it did have a lot of the same uh, trailers, like for The House of Exorcism. It also had clips from silent movies about demons and devils, short clips from silence set to more modern music. It also had the trailers for The Exorcist 2, Heretic, and The Exorcist 3. The Exorcist 2, not really worth it. The Exorcist 3, once again written by Blatty, was interesting, and that's worth seeing. And by the way, for the, uh, the feature, the 4K restoration of The Exorcist was excellent, and this was the original theatrical cut, which I don't think I have, had ever seen before. I saw The Exorcist 40 years ago on HBO, and I'm sure it was at least panned and scanned for format size. I don't know if it was edited for content, but at the time, it was one of the scariest things I'd ever seen. I don't know that my reaction this time was quite as strong, but it's still a powerful and scary movie. I did get some food. I had the Cobb salad, which I've had before. That's always good. And the staff was was excellent. Uh, the service was very good. I was able to get in at the beginning of the pre-show instead of 10 minutes late. So all in all, this was an excellent visit to my local Alamo. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll be back with more Draft House Diaries soon. And in the meantime, enjoy your movies. And when you do, stay till the end of the credits.